Hi there. Thanks very much for joining me and welcome back to the channel. We're having another look at one of the classic Matchbox kits and I've got an absolute peach here. I recently had the review of the Messerschmitt BF109E which was in an absolutely mint box, a mint example. Here I've got another one. It's the Grumman Hellcat from the US Navy. And this too is an absolute peach, but this is a Mark I. Uh, one of the uh, PK-18, but it's one of the very early editions, 1973, but it's still in the lift top box, so it's from very early 73. This will be one of the first produced off the production line for sure. Um, but let's have a look at it in more detail. So, Grumman Hellcat says here, it looks like it's a Marianas turkey shoot, it says uh, Hellcat VF1 of the Hi Hats roars from the flight deck of the Yorktown, USS Yorktown aircraft carrier during the Marianas turkey shoot, June the 19th, 1944. The Hi Hats destroyed 37 of the 354 Japanese aircraft claimed that day. That's a heck of a tally. By the combined forces of 15, 15 US carriers, my god. Okay, so that's very impressive. Lovely artwork. You've got a Jap Japanese plane there going down in terrible flames, as you can probably see. Um, looks like he was trying to do a bit of a kamikaze, but it looks like it's gone a bit badly wrong for the Japanese there. Very, very nice artwork. So as I say it's PK-18. You've got your usual thing where you've got the, uh, the call-out showing the colours of it. Some strange colours here again. Um, it's like a green and an olive green. I'm not sure they go together, really, especially for a marine plane, but anyway. Very clear, um, no painting is necessary, a few adverts on the side, the ones that we've already seen like the, the Harrier and I think all these we've seen are, are going to see. So let's get straight into it and have a look at the kit. So it's a lift top box which is, makes it all the more attractive and desirable uh, and I say it's a mint example. We've got the typical colour call outs just ask, telling you what to paint the small parts in at the end of the actual uh, box end. So you've got your engine, prop, pilot and seat undercarriage, one or two details like the curving on the canopy and the tail wheel. And then on the other side, it's exactly the same, but showing it in completely alternative colours. Don't ask me why. Let's have a look at what's inside. Typical matchbox stand, we won't do on that because I've seen it a million times here. We've got all sorts of parts. Uh, and there's the canopy. I thought we'd lost the canopy, but we haven't. Here it is. Now then. That looks lovely. Nice little canopy that. It's uh, not a big canopy is it? But no, yeah, does the job. Very nice. Some very nice um, decals again. All look very mint. So you've got some Royal Navy versions here. Uh, Royal Navy, Royal Australian Navy. Oh yeah, it is. It's Royal Navy. It says it underneath. Um, and then you've got your Hellcat uh, logo that goes on your stand there. Instructions. Very, very nice. Proper, original, purple range, authentic instructions. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Didn't just tell me about the production, saying it came into service in 1941 and became one of the mainstays uh, towards the end of the war even. Of course, ultimately, it was kind of replaced by the Corsair, but this is the plane that was helping them really fight the Japanese Zeros and really struck back at them uh, for the first time with something of equal quality that was carrier-based. So it was a mighty little plane, small but very powerful little thing. A blurb on the back, because it's a Mark 1 original issue, you get the hot hints that nobody really wants, but <laughs> we'll, we'll just breeze over that. And then we've got main instructions, so you've got your pilot going into his seat, engine and your spinner and your cowling being assembled. Bringing all that together then and gluing in your um, fuselage halves together with the pilot in there and your tail wheel. Then you're putting in your canopy, Probably leave that to later if I were you. And your tailplanes are going on, and then we've got the wings being built up, uh, and they're quite interesting the way that they are divided a little bit more than usually. Makes them look quite strong actually. There's an aerial going in there, then you're building up your undercarriage, and then I'll just see me out for this. And then finally, we've got the final assembly with all the parts, including the fuel tanks going in, because these are carrier based, don't forget, the fuel tank helps them a lot. And they're a fighter, so they're not carrying any underwing stores. So you've got your twist and turn undercarriage going in, or you just have the doors closed. And that's it, really. So it's a fairly straightforward build. Let's have a look at the parts, then. Here we go. So we've got some very dark olive green here. Um, it looks almost like a sort of tank colour, doesn't it? 
Um, but it's nicely, it's nicely figured. It's got this unusual sort of cutout. Of course, the reason they've done that is because it's got folding wings. So they've actually put the cutout at the natural point where the wings would fold. But sadly, they don't fold on the model, which is a bit of a shame. Um, not to worry. Um, you've got your undercarriage uh, covers here, which are quite nicely shaped. You've got the alternative sort of half wheel if you don't actually want to put the wheels down there. Uh, and then you've got your undercarriage legs here, and here, and then you've got your inboard of your wing underneath. Uh, on the top, it shows it kind of uh, shows it without. Okay, without the air on, so they've got a mixture of the way that they've got these cutouts. It makes it a bit complicated, but I think it'll work okay. And then you've got those tailplanes, which look really nice. And then finally, the last sprue, which is the very chunky little fuselage. Again, big radial angle here. Uh, I'm not sure what the engine was. Does it mention it there? Was it the Wasp? I don't think it was, and that was later. But uh, it kind of looks a bit like a Wasp. It's a forerunner of it, probably, perhaps not as, quite as powerful. And you've got your intake here, so you can see you've got your under chin intake, and you've got your uh, wheels and tyres, and you've got your propeller over on the other side. Which, sorry, you've got the, um, the tail wheel there and the pilot. And here's your actual engine here, and your seat, and then you've got your under under body tank fuel tank. Uh, and it's got one of these, um, the rudder section is the section on this model that's both on both sides. So it's like a two-sided rudder. So you only have the, the part of the tail without the rudder on the other side. But um, it's got some raised uh, panel lining, but I think, that's, I think that's correct on the Hellcat. I think it is raised anyway, so that's absolutely fine. It's very, very subtle. Um, but it's a meaty little plane, a real chunky little devil. Uh, and it looks the part, I've got to say, and I say with the artwork on the box, which is really excellent. That's a nice kit, actually. I'm not entirely sure about those slightly strange, um, slightly odd uh, way they've done the wings. That's a little bit peculiar, but um, other than that, it looks absolutely brilliant. And it's a mint example. That absolutely looks like literally brand new. It's absolutely fantastic. So that's the Grumman Hellcat from Matchbox, and uh, I've got to say, I think it looks really nice, actually. Um, if I had a few more copies, and I don't, then I might be tempted to build the lives, but um, maybe I'll have to get an Edward one or a Revell version, you know, and maybe build that instead. Anyway, um, 8 out of 10, I think, no problem at all for this one. hope you'll give me a 10 out of 10 by giving me a thumbs up uh, with a like, and please share and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to ding the notification bell on the video because then you'll get notification about the next ones that come up and you can relive some more of this lovely artwork and see these kits that you've probably made yourself many many years ago and hopefully enjoyed and bring back some happy memories. Keep your eyes peeled for the next videos, there'll be more coming along shortly and in the meantime thanks very much for your company and bye for now.